Guys, welcome back to Cryptic Mining. Guys, I have a card that's thermal throttling. It's this card right here. I've already identified it. So it's this one right here. So we're getting about 81 mega hashes from this card. So I'll take you over now so you can see. So it's running at, what, 59 degrees Celsius, I believe. Yeah, and we're getting 81.45. So obviously, I need to hook this up to one of my Windows computers, and we'll put it on Hardware 64 and see what the issue is. I'm pretty sure it's just thermal throttling, but uh, we'll get to that, and we'll probably be doing some thermal pads. All right, let's do that. All right, guys, so as you can see, I've got the card out that's causing the issues. I've got it nice and powered here on my little test bench. It's 16 degrees Celsius in here at the moment. I've got it the same settings as I do on Rave OS, and as you can see here, it is already hitting 110 Celsius on the memory junction temperature. So that's telling me that this card is thermal throttling. On Windows, we are getting 88 mega hashes at 232 power limit. So what we're going to do is we're going to tear down this card. We're going to do some thermal pads. I bought some thermal pads. Uh, from my last video, I teared the card, one of the other cards down and measured the thermal pads. So we've got some thermal pads here. We'll change the thermal pads on this. So we'll tear down, we'll change the thermal pads, we'll bring it back over and we'll see what if this has fixed the issue. Alright guys, let's move over there and get this thing happening. Alright guys, so to do your thermal pads, you're going to need a few things. So as you can see, I've got some stuff here lined up. Um, obviously, I'll just go through it with you real quick. So we've got the thermal pads. These cards take 2 millimeters, so we're going to use those. I've got some thermal paste. Uh, this thermal paste is a good thermal paste. It's just below cryonaut and it doesn't cost as much. So we're going to be using that one for the thermal paste for the processor. Um, I also use a spreader. I like to spread my thermal paste. What you do is up to you. Let me know in the comments what your most preferred method is. Uh, obviously, you need a Phillips head screwdriver. I've got a Stanley knife. And, of course, some scissors to help us cut through those thermal pads. And also got my calipers here, or micrometer tool. Alright guys, so obviously you need to tear down your card. Can't tear it down on this side, so... We'll flip this over. Now you're going to see on your own card, if you're doing this for yourself, that you're going to have a bunch of screws on the back. Um, you don't want to lose any of these screws, but I think we have 12 of these screws on the outside. And we've got two on the back here that we need to take out that's holding the framing and we obviously have the four that are holding the heatsink. So we're going to start taking this apart. Guys, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm just going to race through this. I'll fast forward the video and I'll come back to you. So this thermal paste is absolutely rock solid. That's why I had a little bit of trouble trying to pull this apart. So we'll get this fan out and we'll take a look at the card and the thermal pads. There we go. Alright guys, so you can already see on this here that these are the thermal pads around the outside here that are for the memory chips. Okay, now this pad here actually seems not to be too bad. Um, it's actually still looks like it's in good condition, but we'll change it anyways. Uh, we've got some of the other thermal pads that have actually ripped off and is sticking to the memory chips or the memory modules. So we're going to clean all this up. Um, I've got a little bit of solution here. Um, it's just going to clean up the CPU and we'll clean up the card. So I'll race through this once again and then we'll get back to it. Okay guys, so as you can see, we cleaned it all up. That thermal paste is on there pretty tight. Uh, we're gonna get these thermal pads off now. I can already see, even just touching it now, it's 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 bad quality. It, it's really bad quality. I'll show it to you in a minute. We'll get the other ones off. See, this one here is the one that doesn't feel too bad. This one here, you can tell, this one just wants to rip and tear as well. Now, yes, under heat, they do turn out to be like this, but they shouldn't be like that at all. So, look, I'll show you guys. So. See, this this just, it's just tearing. See how it's just tearing in the middle? It shouldn't be doing that. Obviously, under high heat, it does do that, though. This one's all right, except for that last little bit there. That was about the same. So, as you can see, that one's shiny. It should be like that. It should be able to conduct the heat through it. I mean, obviously, if it loses that conductivity, there's probably another reason why this card started thermal throttling. So, we're going to clean this up. 
And we want to make sure that everything is all cleaned off so we don't have any residue left. So we'll make sure we wipe this clean as well. It looks like Ethereum has been pushed back, so I'm a little bit excited about that just because obviously we can keep mining up for a while. I was coming up with a game plan to obviously keep mining because, I mean, obviously, depending on the profitability, it's probably going to be a bit a bit all over the shop, especially with all those terra hashes that are on Ethereum right now and need to go somewhere else, but, yeah. All right, guys, so let's measure this thing up. So we can see that this here is... One and a half centimeters wide. Yeah, so that's one and a half centimeters wide. The rest should be the exact same. Yeah, right on one and a half centimeters. So they're all the same. So obviously we know that we just need to keep that that width. Uh, the length of this is five centimeters. Double check that. So that to set that to one and a half. Yep, that's perfect. And we'll check that it is five. Yep, that's five. Okay, guys. So look, measuring your thermal pads and fitting them on there correctly is a big factor when changing your thermal pads because if you have them too too wide and you know it's touching that shroud of the casing for the heat sink, then obviously. It's not going to be able to touch properly, and you're going to have gaps, and you're going to your car's going to overheat, and you're just going to run into more issues. So, so guys, it is good for me that the you know the uh, Ethereum delay and other miners that the delay has happened because obviously we can keep mining, we can keep that high profitability for the meantime, possibly the next, possibly the next eight months. I guess we'll just have to see how we go. But um, look, I've got a few game plans in place that I'm going to obviously do because obviously I've got three and a half giga hashes of power here that needs to go somewhere. I mean, obviously. You know, I don't know what algorithm or network I'm going to move to yet, but I've got a few few ideas which ones I want to do. But we'll figure that out in the long in the in the future. So, guys, I'm just going to measure these up, cut them, and I'll get back to you. Okay guys, so I've got these thermal pads on there now. Obviously, I've left one side of the thermal pads on there, like the casing. Um, we're just going to give this a good clean because we need to do the thermal paste. And obviously, if you're doing your thermal pads, you have to do your thermal paste. You can't you can't remove that heatsink and not do your thermal paste. So obviously, we've got, as I said, we've got the MX-5 thermal paste here. Um, oh, hang on. There we go. Okay, so... Now, I, I like, as I said earlier, I like to spread my thermal paste. What you guys do is, you know, up to you. Let me know in the description if you guys have your own methods. But I like to make sure there's absolutely full coverage on this. Um, I think that's a very important factor, especially for a GPU. And you want to make sure that you have that full coverage. Now, obviously, I'm only applying a little bit now. And if I need to, I'll apply a little bit more later. We'll start that coverage and we'll move forward from that. Because, obviously, we don't want to have too little. and We don't want to have too much, especially when it comes to... A GPU. So once again, guys, I'm just going to speed up this video, um, and yeah, we'll get this thermal paste on. All right, guys. So as you can see, I now have full coverage of the GPU, the processing unit. So that's exactly how I want it. Um, obviously, this stuff here is a bit sticky. But that's a good day because it's you know it'll harden up well and you know we'll fill in all those gaps. Make sure we put this back on. Now you want to make sure you put that back on, otherwise it's just going to harden in this chip. Okay, guys. So now we're going to remove these top layers here of the thermal pads. This is just little coverings. I left these on here because I didn't want to get thermal paste on there if something did happen, and you know you don't want to be mixing the both. I mean, I don't think it'll be a big issue, but um, obviously. Being that this car's already thermal throttling, I don't want to obviously run into any other issues in the future. But if, as you can see here, guys, obviously these have full coverage 
on the memory chips themselves and that's what we're looking for we want to make sure we have it fully covered but we can't have it overlapping or anything like that otherwise we could run into issues now obviously we've still got the thermal pads on this card here as you can see these are just for the other chips on the board we're not going to be replacing these because these aren't causing the issue all right guys so i'm just going to spin out the video again um, we'll just get this card back together and then we'll take it over and start testing it Okay guys, so she's back together now, so the only thing of advice that I could possibly give you is that obviously when you're doing the heatsink screws, do it for uh, diagonally, so that way you can make sure that it's on there nice and tight, so we have that tight connection for the graphics processing unit and the memory modules. Okay guys, so I'm going to grab this camera over here, and we'll take this card back over to the test bench, and uh, we'll put it on the computer, we'll plug her in, we'll get hardware 64 open, and we'll see what kind of hashes we're getting. Um, so, so guys, I'm hoping that the thermal pads do fix this issue. I mean, obviously, there's a few other reasons that a thermal throttle may happen. It could be because of voltage spikes. It could be a few things, but I'm pretty adamant that this year was obviously because that memory clock is we hitting 110 Celsius, which obviously, for these cars, these cars thermal throttle. So, we're going to plug this in. We'll get it onto the window system. We'll see also, as well, with those thermal pads on there, how much temperature has dropped on those memory junction modules so i'm really keen to see that um so yeah guys i'll get this thing plugged in i'll get the computer turned on i'll load everything up and i'll get straight back to you okay guys so we have it all plugged in we've got hardware info open we've got msi afterburner open now the fan is running a little bit quicker than it was before but our memory junction temperature at the moment is only 34 celsius we're just starting up the miner now, so we're going to see where that hits, and we're going to see if we're still going to be getting those 99 mega hashes. Now, if I see 99 mega hashes straight away, I know this car's going to be working, because as soon as I plugged in last time, it's on 88 mega hashes. So we're only hitting 56 Celsius, 62. Um, obviously, that'll keep moving up just a little bit from here. Okay. Okay, we're hitting 64, 66. Now, guys, space, there should be a pretty good saving on the temperature here. Okay, so we hit 99.28 mega hashes at 230 watts of power, and the fan's currently sitting at 80%. Now, guys, if you're wondering what happens with your fans after your thermal pads, especially on the blower-style cards, it actually changes it so that you can... Um, so Because the heat's getting distributed properly, the fan obviously has to do a little bit more work to keep those memory modules down. But as you can see, we're still sitting at 99.28 mega hashes, and I'm really happy with that. And our memory junction temperature is sitting at 62 Celsius. So, guys, we've saved over 40 degrees Celsius on this card in the memory junction module. So, I'm more than happy with this. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to... I'll, I'll take this card out. Um, I'll get it back in the machine. I'll put it back on the Rave OS and we'll see what kind of stats we're getting. All right, guys. So, I've got the card back in the rig. It's currently running at 49 degrees Celsius. The fan speed is 72 percent, 99.77 mega hashes. So, I'm more than happy with the outcome of changing these thermal pads and everything else is in the high 90s now. Now, guys, obviously, as I said, the fan speed will probably stay up a little bit on this card because obviously, with a turbo variant card, it has to obviously take care of the extra heat that's going through the heatsink. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Be safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.